Narcolepsy type 1 is a biologically understood condition with very specific and objective testing. So why is it so commonly misdiagnosed? I'm Dr. Andy Burkowski of Relax Health, and this is part two of the 15 reasons why narcolepsy type 1, also known as narcolepsy with cataplexy, is so commonly misunderstood and misdiagnosed. You can click above for part one in case you missed it. You could also click on the link below as I've written an extensive blog post about these 15 reasons in much greater detail. So let's start with number eight. Hypocretin levels have not been commercially available until recent years. The destruction of the hypothalamus in the area of the brain that produces hypocretin is the main cause of narcolepsy type one. And these brain cells get damaged and destroyed and can no longer produce hypocretin. Well, now we can test spinal fluid, send it to a testing facility at the Mayo Clinic and find out if there's any hypocretin in the brain and spine fluid. It's a, an uncomfortable test to have a spinal tap or a lumbar puncture, but this is the definitive way of diagnosing this condition. Patients with narcolepsy type one have no hypocretin in their spinal fluid. And if they have kind of a low level, it sort of means that the brain is in the process, those cells are, are being damaged. If there's a normal hypocretin level, they cannot have narcolepsy type one. It's very easy to figure out the answer with this test. Unfortunately, it has not been commercially available until, until recent years, but it's an extremely useful test. This is for people who do have the HLA for narcolepsy, because remember, the HLA for narcolepsy is necessary but not sufficient. Maybe 30% of the population has this HLA. So it's a prerequisite, but in order to find out for sure, the hypocretin testing needs to be done. Number nine, insurance reimbursement biases clinicians to order too many multiple sleep latency tests. These are the objective tests that diagnose narcolepsy, but as I've discussed before, they're not specific to narcolepsy and many clinicians misinterpret the results of this test and diagnose patients with narcolepsy. Number 10, actigraphy is largely not covered by insurance. Actigraphy is like these wrist-worn devices that track body movement. Well, actigraphy at a medical grade level can very fairly accurately track someone's sleep pattern and how much they're sleeping prior to the, the study being done. And the actigraphy can root out probably, in my estimation, 80, 90% of the cases of excessive sleepiness because it can reveal insufficient sleep, irregular sleep patterns, or just very, very disrupted sleep. And this is not covered by insurance. Most medical centers don't use actigraphy. And when they do, they don't always use it because it's generally not reimbursed. Number 11, drug companies have an obvious financial incentive to promote narcolepsy diagnoses. There are a lot of wake-promoting agents, stimulants for this very rare condition. Again, you know, one in 200,000 people might have this condition. They're not gonna make a lot of money on a rare condition. So the more people who get diagnosed with these conditions, the more money these drug companies can make. So there's heavy advertising for these conditions, making it seem like they're actually a lot more common than they are, even compared to very common conditions like restless leg syndrome, where very few people understand how to diagnose and treat the condition, and there's very little advertising because there are no new drugs for restless leg syndrome. Number 12, researchers have a career and financial incentive to overdiagnose these conditions. So if the drug companies are funding research on these drugs, and the clinicians might only see one or two patients a year with these rare conditions, they have a subconscious incentive to overdiagnose patients. So there are plenty of patients who get kind of shoved into the category when somebody's not sure, just so they can be enrolled in a clinical trial for the condition. Number 13, there is a miscommon or misunderstanding of the concept of a diagnosis of exclusion. In these conditions like narcolepsy type two, idiopathic hypersomnia, and to a large extent, narcolepsy type one, you have, to die, you have to exclude all other likely causes of, of disrupted sleep, like 
erratic sleep schedules, insufficient sleep, medication side effects, before you can think to a very rare condition where you don't have a good explanation of it. And this leads to unfortunate misunderstanding and overdiagnosis of these conditions because the other conditions have not been excluded first, the very common ones. Number 14 is that medications for narcolepsy when they're started on a person can be performance enhancing. They can work for anyone. Any normal person who takes a stimulant will be stimulated by the stimulant and they might perform better. They might be more wide awake. It, it could be that they have narcolepsy or it could be they don't get enough sleep as I have my coffee in front of me as an example. But once someone is misdiagnosed and they're on these drugs that do enhance performance, it seems very hard for them to get off of these drugs and to try to make behavioral changes to restructure their sleep. And so it's sort of, they're dependent on it, it's a quick fix. So it's hard to get these diagnoses reversed. And lastly, number 15, this may come as a surprise to some of you, but some patients actually want to have narcolepsy. Narcolepsy and, and other rare diagnoses, it, it sort of gives somebody this idea that they have something special. It's their sleepiness. These other symptoms are not their fault. So it garners empathy from other individuals, maybe less responsibility. And telling them that, you know, it's just their medication side effect that from this other medication they were taking or their sleep schedule was inappropriate and it caused narcolepsy-like symptoms, they don't want to hear that. They want to have this special condition, even though it's a permanent damage to the brain. And there are other incentives as well. Uh, some people want the medications for narcolepsy. So a lot of reasons for people wanting to have narcolepsy. And the best example of this is the majority of patients in whom I suspected they did not have narcolepsy, the vast majority have not gotten that HLA test, which is a simple blood test because they really didn't want to know that they did not have it. So those are all of the 15 factors that I can think of why narcolepsy type 1 is often misdiagnosed. As always, this video is for general medical information only. It does not constitute the practice of medicine. All decisions regarding diagnosis and treatment of medical conditions should be made under a licensed medical provider. And as I always say, one of the keys to sleeping well is to relax.